The Magic Stone of Six Sages is possibly one of the biggest magic stones to come out of Force of Will recently. Just about every deck in New Frontier is running the stone. Probably nearly every deck in uh, the Wanderer format and any Eternal format will be running the stone. The Six Age stone has become one of the harder to find stones, despite how many boxes were actually sold for the set, given how key of a stone it is. Players and collectors are probably hoarding the stone and it has caused the price to rise and rise as time goes on. This is not that card. This is a proxy of it. Yeah, th this is a fake. Th these, these right here, also fakes. E every, everything on this play right, right now? I mean, to tokens can be excluded. These right here, all, all proxies. They're all fakes. I'm going to be showing you guys how uh, I make my proxies, or at least one of the methods. This method that I've uh, started doing recently is actually really easy to do and easy to learn. Some of these other methods are a little more difficult, not gonna lie. But uh, I, might, I might make a video on those later. Just to uh, show how like close they look compared to like actual six sage stones we got a proxy here and then well we also have another proxy here let me get you the actual one now this this is the actual six sage stone nope this is a proxy 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 there we go this is the actual six sage stone like, aside from the coloring, like, if you put these just out on a table, people are gonna assume it's the actual card. That's how nice they look. But it's not until you actually feel them that it's like, alright, something's a little off. Because this is straight up, these are straight up cards with just a layer of photo paper attached to them. Now, to kind of ruin my hard work, actually this has permanent tape. Let me, uh... Who's a ruler that no one cares about? There we go, there's Mikage. Alright, so I'll, I'll go ahead and show you. So, this right here is just a life point card. And I, I've used double sided tape to just get that faux paper right on there, nice and tight. So, these uh, rulers uh, were like the experimental versions I was trying out. Uh, this is just, it's just a, uh, it's double sided uh, removable tape. As for these six sage stones, I've kind of upped my game and it's with permanent tape and they just hold a lot tighter. Like a lot tighter, like, like right there that, that, that kind of comes off a little bit, but like the corners, those corners aren't going anywhere. They are on there tight. Alright, just to uh, kind of give you guys uh, a little taste of my other proxies. So, this is... Sorry for the artist I stole this art from. I'm not selling this, so please, please don't get mad at me. You just have really cool bunny art. This right here is a token that I made using a different method. So basically, I took a regular cardstock and... Uh, glued it together on with photo paper, cutted it, rounded the corners using a little uh, corner rounder, which this thing is great, but I've upgraded to a better corner rounder. This right here, I'll be leaving a link in the description for this thing. Anyone that's wanting to make proxies, this is a beast. Like, specifically the small corner right here, it, it's like almost exactly the same as a, uh, as a train card corner. But yeah, this was with uh, a method I was trying out where I was like trying to like get the proper thickness of a card, which this is just about it. Like, yeah, that, that's that's about the like bright thickness for a uh, TCG card. But it, it's definitely a lot more time consuming, and there is definitely a learning curve here. It is not easy to do. I might uh, show this like method off later if I can kind of perfect it more. I, I really just got lucky that I lined it up properly. 
I also have a very like super simple method. This is actually just a matte, like blank playing card that I printed onto. This is probably one of the easier methods, but the results are kind of, they can be kind of meh sometimes. Like depending on uh, the darkness of a area, it will like, like really pull up with ink and it just doesn't turn out that great. Still a very like easy method just to get like a quick uh, token out or something like that. But for today we're gonna be going with the method that I think is like the easiest to replicate and like the results are like good enough in my book. It's slightly thicker than an actual train card but if you're playing with proxies you better be playing casually because these are not allowed in tournaments. Now before I start showing you my process for making proxies I would like to remind you that these are not tournament legal, and to please support the game by buying the official products when you can. They should only be looked at as placeholders in your deck to determine if you will want to make the purchase or trade for certain cards in the future. Or on the worst case scenario, that card is just no longer available and you really want to play with it because there's plenty of like Valhalla cards or like new Valhalla cards that are just like hard to come by and I, I can't I can't knock you for that. I mean, uh, that was the time that not a lot of people were playing, so there's not much we can do there. All right, we're going to uh, jump on over to uh, the program that I use and uh, I'll kind of walk you through the steps. All right, guys, we are here in paint.net. It's a free program. I highly recommend checking it out. We're gonna go ahead and get a new page going. We're gonna bump that resolution up. Let's uh, let's make that like a like a hot uh, say 500. See how that looks. And then uh, for our width, we'll say 8.5, which is standard for letter paper, and 11 inches for the height, which is also standard for letter paper. All right, let's get that opened. We'll then go and get the card that we want to print off. So we'll go to the official Force of Will website. Go down to the card database. We'll just type in the card that we want to get. Go and search that, 6H Stone. Go ahead and... You, you probably don't have to do this, I, I do it anyways. I always open a different tab and then I just uh, save image. And you can see I've already like done some testing and stuff. But uh, we'll go ahead and save that anyways as a new image. Let's uh, hop back over to paint.net. And we'll go to our layers. Import from file. We'll just go ahead and grab the one we just got. Alright, so we have our card image here. Now we need to get a border going so we can start resizing it to the proper size. Based on how our printer prints and uh, the size of the card that we're trying to print onto. So we got it selected right now. We're going to go down to the background layer and we're going to hit the cut button. This will cut a hole where the card currently is. So if we over here on the layers, whoops, I am to the layers. There we go. That was weird. Uh, so over here on the layers right now, if we were to just blank out the layer. There is now a hole there, which is exactly what we want. We're going to be forming a border around here. So we can uh, resize, like smaller, ma like make the image bigger or smaller based on how uh, the printer prints it out. So we're going to go ahead and hide that for now. Go down to the background layer. We're already there. Get our little selector tool. Just going to get a nice little... This little border going around here. Let's make that a little uh, right about there. Looks good, yeah. We can, always, we can always fix that later. This is good for now. Now we're gonna get our paint bucket tool, and we're just gonna make this. Uh, we're gonna make this black. So we got that going on there. Now we're gonna get our wand tool. We're gonna select the white. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that. So now we have this nice little black border around our image. And we're going to be using this to kind of gauge the size of uh, how big this image needs to be on this uh, canvas. So I'm going to go ahead and hide my 
six sage stone here. And uh, we're going to go ahead and print this out and see see how much smaller we need to make it. Because looking at it right now, I know for a fact it's going to be too big for a card, but we'll, we'll see how this goes. Right. So we'll go to file. Oops, that's weird. My mouse is being weird. File and print. All right. Um, and we're just printing, you know, I have it set to photo paper already. Don't worry about that. I, I just have regular printer paper in my printer right now. We're just using it to gauge the size. Alright guys, so here's our first attempt. I'm gonna, just going to use a little life counter card just to see how big it is. So we're going to need to take that and we're going to need to shrink it down a bit. Yeah, that's it's way too big for what we're trying to do. So th this right here is why you want to do like some trial and error with this method. I don't have the exact number and I guarantee you different printers are going to print out differently. So let's go back over to paint.net, use our select tool. Go ahead and select that. Use our move tool. We're going to hit hold down shift. Just going to drop that down a little bit. Probably, probably like right about yeah. Down the exact science of this. Let's go ahead and uh, try printing that again. Go print. Just gonna go ahead and uh, print again. So. There's, like, like I said, there's no, like, proper method for what I'm doing. Like, different printers are going to print differently. Different programs are going to print a little differently. I'm not a... I'm not an art major. Even though I took a lot of art classes, I'm not an art major. Alright, guys. Here's attempt number two. This is looking a little better. Alright. Let's see now. That is actually just about right on the money. Uh, it's a little off. I'm going to shrink it just a tiny bit. Yeah, there's a, there's a little bit too much of a white border. We do want some, like, we do want some of a border, but I think I'm going to shrink it down a tad bit more. Like, as you can see here, this is a, uh, this was a, so, by the way, check your printer settings or else you're going to have stuff like this happen to you. But, like, for what I have for these uh, proxies, they are just a tiny bit bigger than an actual card. So, like, I, I'm shrinking this down, like, like pixels, like, yeah, just a tiny bit. That show up on camera. Yeah, no, that's, that's really hard to see. Uh... Yeah, okay, you can kind of see a corner. Like right over there, yeah. Yeah, super, super precise. I have it down to a science. Not at all. That's a little too much. Let's, uh, right about there. Was I even a difference? Let's control Z that. Okay, yeah, that was a difference. Okay. Control Y. Let's try that one more time. I feel like this one might be... The one. Let's go ahead and hit print. Alright, you know what they say. Third time's the charm. Let's see what we got. So, I'm looking for it to be just a little bit bigger than the card. Which, that is basically around right the money. Uh, let me, uh, let me show you guys what we're going for again. So let me let me move my mic real quick. Let's uh, change the view of this camera. All right. So as you can see, this is our third attempt. We got it. I'm trying to do this with one hand. Got it just about the size of the card. Right about now. Then if we come over here. When we hold it up against a failed attempt.
It's just about the size of a card as well. Now, just to be on the side of caution, I'm actually going to increase this just a little bit. It's better to have uh, too much than too less, in my opinion. So we're going to go back into paint.net. Remember to hold down shift whenever you move anything. So we got re-enlarge, we're just going to drop it down like one pixel. There we go. Yeah, I'm going to go for that. Go file, and print again. Should be our last little test run. All right, and our fourth attempt, which honestly should be the last. I, I feel pretty, pretty confident in this one. Uh, let's go ahead and place that. Yeah, that's uh, that's just about what I was looking for. So there's like a slight border on the card, which uh, if we go over to failed attempt, there's a slight border around the card's like actual image. Let's see if I can get that to. There you go. Yeah. So yeah, there's like a slight border there, which. I'm, either way, I'm going to be compensating, like, on the actual, like, whenever I put the image on here. I'm going to, like, actually, like, like, edge into the actual border just to, like, kind of, like, compensate. But, uh, let's get back over to paint.net and I'll, uh, I'll show you what I mean. So, oosh. So, now that we have our little template base, anytime that we, uh, drop a new image in here, and it might not actually be... It might not actually be a card image. Like, let's say I'm going to do like a custom like art thing in paint.net. I won't necessarily have like a card already set for this. I could just uh, use this little uh, little black box as like a sizing tool. But uh, we're gonna go and select our card. So go ahead and zoom in here. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start resizing it to a size that we like. Let's go ahead and shrink this down a tiny bit more. Uh, here's a fun little thing you can do while it's selected. You can bring these up and down. You can see that the, uh, the card is getting hidden just a little bit by the border. Which is actually the what I want. I want this to be like slightly bigger than the border I have. Because this border is going to be mostly just a, a card size like template. Whereas this little uh, image here is going to uh, want a border on the card. Like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to want to cut off the excess of this image. Whenever I'm actually like taping this to the card. So now that we have the size just about what we want. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and uh, hit copy. So we got our our six sage stone, the right size that we want copied. We'll hit paste. Now we got a second one. Go ahead and place that right about Nia. Gonna hit paste again. Got to get that placed right about there. If you don't like the spacing, we can always respace it out. Get that right about, yeah. And hit paste again. Set that. Uh, ooh, yeah, we're gonna need it. Let's go ahead and hit Control Z and Z. Bring this over a little bit more to the left. A little bit more to the left. Alright, now let's hit paste. Alright, now let's go ahead and hit paste again. Bring this down. Just kind of line these up uh, vertically. Probably good, we could probably bring this over a tiny bit more to the left. Let's go ahead and get our select tool and uh, bring this one over to the left a little more as well. 
Yeah. Bring it down a tiny bit. Bring the center one over a little more. Let's get this looking nice. A little bit more to the left, yeah. Give, give the one on the right some breathing room. Yeah, right about there. That looks good. Go ahead, paste. The next one going. Drop it right here just to get rid of that original, rid of that original image. Hit paste. Drop it right about here. Yeah. I need to bring this over a little bit. Yeah, we'll, we'll leave it here for now. So. The reason why I'm not having these like right up against each other is because we're gonna have to, like cut these out. And the way that we'll cut them out is uh we'll kinda cut them out uh with a white border around them. After that we'll tape them to the actual card, and then we'll cut out their like final cuts afterwards. Alright, so we got this going on over here. Let's uh go ahead and reselect. Bring this over a tiny bit. Oh, we we're starting to get the other card in there. Bring this over a tiny bit. Just get the card there. And we can actually use our arrow keys. Just kind of edge it over and let's edge it down a little bit. Yeah. Have room for my scissors. Alright, now let's go ahead and paste. Let's go ahead and uh, if you hold down shift, you get the little, uh, little like movement key. And actually just uh, pivot this right there place that right there yeah go and hit paste for the final time it's gonna turn that yeah all right now everything has uh, some nice breathing room let's go ahead and go to we're using for our template here. Let's go ahead and rename that. Make sure, make sure to name your layers, people. Six Sage. There we go. All right. So now that we have the signs that we want, we're gonna go ahead and uh, get rid of our template. Now this is all ready to print. Now the cardstock that I've been using lately, and I, I actually bought this by mistake. Um, but then I found a use for it whenever I tried out this new method. Is uh, it's made by Koala. It's inkjet glossy photo paper. Is uh, 30 pounds, uh, 115 grams per square uh, meter. As far as some Google searching has done, it means that it's super thin, which is what you want to go for. You want thin photo paper for this. Thin photo paper. I've uh, bought some other types of photo paper off Amazon just to kind of try this out and it should be showing up in the mail here soon. So if I find something I like more, I'll probably leave it in the description. I'm also going to try some uh, self-adhesive photo paper to see if uh, it looks a little nicer. But uh, we're, we're, we're going to be using this. Going to be using this. Also as of the recording of this, this is actually sold out so if you want to buy this, Walmart has it online. But, uh, yeah. Just try to try find your thinnest photo paper. Alright, let's go ahead and uh, print off this page. Alright. Let's see how this turns out. Alright, let's uh, take a look at it. Uh, looks like the uh, looks like the print quality is pretty solid. It looks about uh, the same as what I got the original time. Oh, once again, this isn't like a science. We're not all using the same printer, so I'd recommend kind of messing around with stuff if things don't look right to you. Maybe you need to increase your resolution. Maybe you need to decrease your resolution. Really, all depends on what kind of printer you're using. All right, and. Uh, Looks like, looks like we have a border around it, so we will be able to work with this. 
Now let me go ahead and start getting this cut out and I'll show you the next step. Alright guys, we are on to our final step. Well, second to final step I guess you could say. So, what I have here is something that any, uh, you know, regular force will player will have on them is a shit ton of life points, cards, tokens, whatever. Uh, cards that majority of force will players will not be playing with. It's a cute little gimmick, but yeah. So the first step here will be to use double side tape on each of the corners of the card. Now, if you're a little worried about your first attempts, which, you know, it's pr photo paper is expensive, uh, you can always use like removable double side tape. I've been doing this for a little bit and I feel comfortable enough that I'm going to use permanent double side tape. The benefit of this is, one, it holds on much harder, so it's, it's hard to peel off. And then two, it's a little thinner, and it's also a little easier to manage. Uh, you also need some scissors, and you don't necessarily need this, but I highly recommend a corner rounder. This thing is bay, and that's how you make the proxies look almost real. You don't need a lot on the corners. Really just uh, need to get a little bit. This is very weird trying to do it from the camera's angle. So just a tiny bit of tape. Just like an itty bitty tape. Like e even that right there is a bit much. But yeah, so just a little tape. Go to the corner. I'm a little weird, I like to do it like this. So I'll put it on right. Oh, okay, let me look with my actual eyes. Alright, so... Right about there. Yeah, that looks good. So I like to do it like that. Let me actually watch the tape roll this time with my eyes instead with the webcam. Like, right about there. That's like all you really need. That's all you really need. This stuff is pretty adhesive after it sticks. So I have the tape going that way. Now I'm gonna have my line going this way. Yeah, I kind of just like circle around it like this. There we go. Yeah. And make pr probably a bigger piece right there actually. I probably would have a slightly bigger piece. Let me do a slightly bigger piece for the next one. Yeah. How about there? That feels comfortable. Alright, go to the next corner. And about yeah then go to the final corner oh whoops this is a little bit of a bigger piece that's all right nothing's perfect and right there on the corner we have our corners nice and taped now we're gonna take a little cutout and this is what I meant by we'll have like a white border and then we'll actually like cut off the white border Let's uh, see. Oh, that actually shows up pretty well in, on the camera. Okay, cool. So we have this. This is another reason why thin faux paper is bay. We can actually like see the actual card. So we're just going to line this up to where we have a nice little thin border of the uh, image around the actual card. So this is not showing up on camera anymore. So I'm going to turn away. And line this up with some with a light source I have going on. Yeah. Just make sure you have a nice little border going around the card and make sure your edges are even. So yeah, make sure the excess border is the same size around the card. And then once you feel comfortable start pushing down on the corners now lock it in place all right that feels comfortable let's get that locked in place now it is permanent tape but do you do still have a second like i want to make this corner a little bit wider so i'm gonna tighten that i don't like how this side looks i'm gonna and just quickly before it actually sets into place 
readjust that. Let's readjust this corner, yeah. Alright, yep, we have a nice little border of uh, the card image going around the card. Alright, so let's see if uh, I'm gonna try I'm gonna try to force some more light and see if you guys can see what I'm talking about. Uh oh no, but that does shine through. Uh okay, you can kinda see this bottom left. It's like a border going around, border going around, border going around. Oh, yep, yeah, there's border going around. Yeah. Up at the top. Let's flip it around, yeah. It's like, so I, I, I screwed up a little bit at the top. There's like a very thin border. That's kind of what you're going for. Once we have that going, we'll take our scissors. These are just some regular ass scissors you can pick up at Walmart, nothing special. And by the way, these actually work a lot better than the expensive scissors, I'm gonna be honest. And when you cut along the card, you can basically grind against the Force of Will card, like... Force of Will cards are fucking sturdy, like... When they made the card stock and stuff for this, they... They put the- they put, like, the best quality into the paper. So I'm actually going to be kind of aggressive when I grind into this, so I kind of, I kind of like start the corner and I kind of like, like pivots into where I'm straight on the card. Let me see if I can actually like, I'm not going to be able to like view this through the camera and do this, but I'm going to like hold it up to where I think you guys can see I'm going to try to do it. It's very awkward. Alright, so once I feel the corner. And pivot and basically like grinding against the edge of the card as I cut. Hey guys, editing rest in here from uh, a little closer to the to the current time. I will admit yeah. I uh, flew too close to and the sun uh, on that first card and yeah. I did accidentally cut There's into a, the edge a bit. It's hardly noticeable. Yeah. Unless you're looking for it, you won't uh, see it. Unless fine. you're feeling the edge, you won't you won't notice yeah. it. But yeah, the the second one comes out this a lot cleaner. So just uh, from the guard. Okay, I was bear with say, my like, denial for a bit. First, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think uh, yeah, the paper was just kind of being bleh. But you can kind of see where like this is the top edge of the card. So if we look at the oh no, that was the bottom. That that was the bottom. Uh, so yeah, that was the bottom edge getting cut off. We'll just uh, go ahead and do this. So once again, kind of like when I start to feel the card, I'll just kind of like grind up against the Force of Will card. This is a lot easier to do when you're not trying to keep it on camera. Gotta be honest, this is like typically like less than a foot from my face because I'm like trying to be super precise about it all right go let's go ahead and yeah all right so now we have the borders all cut if we look at the card Looking pretty decent. Alright. Now we're going to go ahead and take our little corner cutter. We're using the small side. Right there. Just gonna stick that in there. And if you hear like, if you feel resistance, it's completely fine. It's only gonna like, chip the edge. Like right here is there's some resistance. It's a loud click. It sounds like you damaged the card, but like, it's very unnoticeable and if you're very careful you can just kind of like set the card in and just it just yeah just cl like clips it like even less just like gently set the card in and yep rounded that corner now set this in yep rounded the corner so yeah that is a uh, magic stone the six sages proxy right there 
not the cleanest one since I did that on camera. And also your first one probably isn't going to be all that clean either. But uh, let me let me get you uh, let me get another one going so you guys can kind of see it a little better. Okay, I'm going to put the tape on outside of camera. Yeah, let me just uh, show you guys one that looks a little better. Is looking at that first one, I think I may have actually clipped an edge. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to move the mic out of the way. Yeah, I'm going to get laser focused as I do the rest of these. I might, I might do like a time lapse or something. Let me get this second one looking nicer for you. Alright, so we got our tape all set up. Got our little card image. Once again, gonna line that up. Get how I like it. Move that down a little bit. To the right look just about good in my book. Once again, you'll want to find what works best for you. It's gonna be a lot of trial and error. Looking at these now, I feel like I would probably increase their size just a little bit more. Because even on this one, I feel like I got the edges just a little bit white. Actually, no, they, they, those look good. I'm, I'm being very critical of myself. Either way, I'd probably, I'd probably increase it just a tiny bit on your first ones. Oh, right. Moving the mic away so I can focus in on this. So yeah, I got up to the corner. Just gonna borderline grind against the card. Yeah. Come in close to the corner. Curve around with the corner. Just sort of grind against the edge. Try not to actually cut into the edge of the card. Like I did on the first one. That was an oopsie. I tried focusing on the camera view. Alright, so once again, going into the corner, curving away, and just going straight along that edge. If you start to feel a lot of resistance, then curve a little to the right. Yeah, that's, that'll do it right there. Yep, nice and clean. Alright, once again, start going into the corner. to where you're along the edge grind against that edge but if you feel too much resistance pull a little to the right there you go nice and clean and if there's any parts that look you look like you need to touch up again don't be afraid to get in there with your scissors it's all right Oh yeah, that one that one's a lot nicer. That one is a lot nicer. Look at that. Okay. Now let's go ahead and take our corner cutter and I'm going to use the uh, very like light method. I'm not going to push in. I'm just going to kind of set it in there. It's in place. I'm just going to not not holding it, just kind of guard like guiding it. Pop. Very light pop. No resistance. Again, we're just setting it in there. Nice and light. It's a little bit chipping, but that's hardly noticeable. Set it in there. Just a light. Well, this one has a little bit of resistance. That's okay. The card is fine. The card is fine. It's hardly noticeable. Let's go for this corner. So this, this one feels like it's going to be fine. Yeah. Nice and light. And there you have it. That is a much cleaner version. You can see a little bit of chipping of the ink. There's not much you can do about that. But, you know, if you look at, like, a regular Force of Will card, there's going to be some chipping on a few cards. That's just ha that's what, just what happens with cards in general. But, yeah, that is uh, it's a much nicer one. Hey, guys. More into the future, Rustin, than uh, what you've been listening to. I've got the self-adhesive photo paper and it works great it's just the image quality is a little iffy 
I feel like I'll need to find some like higher quality self-adhesive photo paper, but aside from the difficulty spiking up, it's actually not that bad. Uh, I don't think it deserves its own video. Like if you want to go for it, just buy the paper and don't worry about the permanent tape. It Yeah, it's, it's basically the same principle. Just line it up properly, give yourself enough room for the borders, and then uh, cut away. Uh, one tip for cutting the like self-adhesive photo paper though, when you do actually like cut into it, the long edge is going to be troublesome. So maybe like halfway through back your scissors off and like bend it and then go into cutting again. And then also be mindful to clean your scissors after maybe like a few pages of cutting because your, your scissors are going to get gunked up like really fast. But yeah, I'll uh, let you guys uh, enjoy the rest of the video. After showing you guys uh, that you can make proxies of like actual cards, this method is also like good for other things like uh, custom cards. Like just for example, I have here a card that's, uh, you know, was, it didn't win the uh, Christmas uh, custom card art challenge. Well, cus it was custom card. This isn't, this isn't a custom art, but uh, you can do stuff like this where you can uh, make a, uh, like, you know, just a custom card using uh, the uh, magic set editor and uh, you can get the force of will like card templates and just kind of make your own force of will cards. And th this is actually using uh, my original method for making like full on cards, like using like cardstock and like photo paper and not using any force of will card stuff. Yeah. You, you can make uh, can make custom cards into real life cards. This is a uh, proxies can also just be a fun thing. And uh, here, here's uh, me experimenting with some foiling and it's like a hit or miss. I'm not going to lie. I need to work on this more. Well guys, uh, that's kind of one of my proxy making processes. This is actually probably going to be my like go-to proxy making process for a while. It's very reliable, it's super easy to do. I don't have to jump through a lot of hoops for it because I already have a template ready. Like, let me show you what my like, actual template looks like. This has been my like go-to template for a while now. Yeah. So. Once you have uh, the sides of the cards down, you can kind of just like line them up with the the actual like other cards and just kind of go from there. You'll you'll literally just like match up the size and just print and go. It's a very easy process. If you guys want to see my other proxy making processes, I can show you guys how I do that too. This process was just the most easy in my opinion like like anyone can do this you don't need like some special printer shenanigans to pull off you just need photo paper scissors permanent tape i highly recommend the corner rounder that thing is amazing looks it makes things look really professional if you're in need of six age stones, I highly recommend trying this out uh, instead of dropping like $120 on them because, I mean, the last time I checked, the full arts were the only things available and those were like $40 or $30, I can't remember. Hopefully the price has dropped, but yeah. Well, uh, if you guys have any questions or anything, feel free to ask. I'll try to answer them the best I can. I'm not a I'm not a master of this. I if I was a master of this, I would probably be uh, trying to sell these instead of uh, showing you guys. Look forward to uh, future videos. There might be a future proxy video if uh, there's more interest in the other methods. If not, look forward to the box openings. And I am working on other projects. Aside from that, have a good night. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.